It's fantastic to be here back at WISE. Um, I've been lucky enough to come here a few times before and see this uh, conference grow over the last few years and uh, just see this incredible community of people focused on education and focused on change continue to grow and evolve um, as this conference continues to grow over the last few years. Um, and that's what I want to talk about today, which is um, people power change, because I think one of the things we believe at Teach First, and I think all of us involved in education probably can get around, is the idea that it is people that power change. Um, in 2002, I founded Teach First, which is a not-for-profit in England and Wales that ensures that every child has a fair start in life. Our vision is that no child's educational success is limited by their socioeconomic background. Um, and this is a huge problem in the UK, in the United Kingdom. Currently, um, someone from a low-income background has only half the chances of getting uh, good grades at their age 16 exams as someone from a wealthier background. Um, there's one statistic that I find um, absolutely incredibly shocking, and when I show this to people, they often don't believe it, but your chances of getting into some of the top, most selective universities in the UK, such as Oxford or Cambridge, um, are 22 times more likely if you're privately educated than if you're on free school meals, if you live below the poverty line in the UK. Um, obviously, that's an outrageous statistic. It is in no way indicative of people's talent. Uh, there's no way that children from private schools are 22 times as likely to be intelligent or 22 times as likely to be capable of the best jobs in society. And so there's something wrong when that statistic is a reality in England and Wales. Um, we believe that um, children from the poorest backgrounds um, don't deserve this. They deserve much better than this. So today I'm going to talk about the power of people to make that sort of change happen um, and how people power change has already started to make a difference in the lives of over a million young people throughout England and Wales um, all over the country. Um, and this is a powerful force whose momentum keeps on building. It's a force that won't stop until we're ensured every child from a low-income background gets the education they deserve until this sort of statistic is just consigned uh, to the dustbin of history. Um, so since we're in Doha, I'm going to start with a question. Uh, which is um, around fossil fuels. And I was thinking, how can I get uh, fossil fuels into my speech a bit, which feels fitting in Qatar? So the question is, can you turn uh, coal into diamonds? Um, and on my way here, I asked my children this question. And I asked my seven-year-old, can you turn coal into diamonds? And he had just watched uh, Superman 3, if anyone's seen that movie, where um, Superman uh, takes a coal, uses his immense power to turn into a diamond, and then makes a beautiful engagement ring for Lois Lane. Um, so my son said, yes, of course you can if you're Superman. You just have to be Superman and um, have a lot of um, muscles to do it. My daughter, who's a bit older, gave a slightly better answer, which she says, well, yes, you can, but it needs huge amounts of energy and millions and millions of years, something she had learned in her science class. So both those answers could be correct. Um, but that is also a defining question for Teach First. And it's been a defining question, I think, for me and for our organization over the last 13 years. Um, and I'll tell you why. When I started, I was a management consultant. And I had just come to London. Um, and I was on a project looking at how businesses could help schools in London. At that point, London schools were the lowest performing schools in the country. According to our data, we could not find one school in London that had a majority of kids from poor families, but the school was doing better than the national average. So we couldn't find any outstanding low-income schools 13 years ago. Um, I went to visit some schools. I visited one school in particular in West London that was in a very difficult estate. And I walked in, and it was pretty chaotic. It, it looked chaotic. Um, you know, children were running all over the place. I spoke to the head teacher, and I said, you know, what, what is your goal for this school? And he said, the thing you have to realize, Brett, is that for these sort of children, success isn't about getting them good grades. It's not about top universities or those sort of things. It's really about keeping them off the street and out of jail. And then he paused to underline his point, and he said, you have to understand, it's really impossible to make too many diamonds out of coal. So that was the line. So on him saying that, my heart really sunk. And it made me angry. And, and when I came back and started telling other people what I had heard, obviously it made other people angry. Um, because these were children with the same opportunity as any other, with the same passion, the same spark, um, really the same intelligence as any other. But they were being written off by some of the people who um, were in charge of their success. 
And in a global city of London, which is full of opportunities, endless possibilities for millions of people, the winners and losers were already being decided before these children even entered that particular school gate. Um, I'm happy to say that school is completely different now. It has a new head teacher, and it's now one of the um, 100 best schools in the country. Same kids from the same estates are now doing fantastic work, which just further underlines the impact that that head teacher was absolutely wrong in that statement. But it was that conversation, that phrase, that you can't make too many diamonds out of coal that helped lead me to start Teach First and helped us get into our vision. Our vision is no child's educational success should be limited by their socioeconomic background. We believe very strongly as a charity, no one should be written off based on where they grew up. No one can be cast aside as a lump of coal. No child can get anything less than the education they need to make the most out of their life opportunities. Because for every child that doesn't meet that potential, every child uh, is a statistic or an individual tragedy that together also makes a national tragedy. Because no country can succeed, and the UK certainly can succeed, if it writes off half of its young people. When we started, schools like the one I described just didn't have the leadership potential for young people. And I realized that teaching and leadership in this job, in these schools, was not just any job, but one of the greatest leadership challenges that existed in, in our country, but really in any country. Because what other job would give you the opportunity to impact lives so directly and so quickly, leading hundreds of children in order to shape and help them shape their own futures? The potential to change lives from day one. In our concept of Teach First, leadership is not about running a school. Leadership is not about running a department. Leadership is about running a classroom. Leadership is about leading young people to get them to the place where they need to get to. Setting and realizing a vision for each child's potential. So over the last 13 years at Teach First, with lots of other partners and lots of other supporters um, outside Teach First, we've worked together to transform the perception of teaching, recasting it as one of the greatest leadership challenges in our country. And what we've seen is Britain's top graduates have responded in the thousands. Teach First is now the largest graduate recruiter in the UK. We uh, are just bigger now than PricewaterhouseCooper, who's number two. Uh, this year we recruited 1,700 teachers. Um, we're also one of the most prestigious graduate recruiters in the country. Um, we're the biggest recruiter from places like Oxford and Cambridge who apply in the thousands. And what we're seeing from all universities is we're attracting the best talent to schools in the greatest need. And that was my realization, is that you can have an idea, a solution, huge amounts of funding, or the most brilliant innovation, but at the end of the day, what you need is people to power this change. And what we could see is in systems across the world, Britain and many other countries, governments focus on systems, they focus on structures, but in the end, you need the people to make it happen. And that's what's the difference is between an outstanding classroom and a classroom which isn't meeting the needs of its learners. What we've seen time and time again is that the key of real innovation and making a difference on the front line is always people. It's why any plan fails or succeeds. Any business could say that, any policy initiative, and any school. People are the key agents of change, and people power the change. So over the last decade, we've invested in people. We've recruited over 7,000 inspiring graduates and mid-career professionals, and I see a few in the, in the audience here. Um, and we've tried to find people with real leadership potential. We've invested in their training and development. It's not just about recruiting people. It's about ensuring they're trained and supported really well, trying to give them world-leading support and training, and not just training them as teachers, but also as leaders in the classroom from day one, leading change and having an impact. And we've got them to the front line, to the schools and communities facing the biggest challenges. And what we've learned over the last 13 years is that it's not really just the recruitment that's vital. As I said, it's all about the development, it's all about the training, it's all about the support. It's about the constant encouragement that all teachers need, helping them set their own leadership vision of what they can achieve and how they can go about doing it. If people are the key to change, we need to constantly invest in them. Because what we've seen is that the problem of educational inequity is too great for, for any one simple solution, too entrenched. We knew from day one that we needed a movement. And what we could see is that movement beginning to build in these slides. A movement of people, a movement of change makers, a movement of urgency. So across classrooms, across schools, across business, across society, all of whom are taking action to ensure life chances for children are fair. 
So what we've done is after our recruits finish the initial two years on the leadership development program, teaching in low-income communities, we support them to continue to amplify that people power to support children for the rest of their careers. And these leaders have now worked with over one million children, one million young people across the UK, um, in schools up and down the UK to help transform the life chances of children all over the country. And thousands of them, the, almost two-thirds, have remained in teaching with hundreds going on to take leadership positions in schools, leading classrooms, leading departments. Um, we recently found out that um, te our teachers are seven times more likely to move into a leadership role five years after starting teaching um, than most other new teachers. We have about 20 head teachers already. And many have even set up their own schools which defy the odds and deliver UK leading results with children who are once cast off as coals. And others have taken their experience to the highest levels of policy making, working at the heart of government to ensure politicians never let any child be written off. Many are driving business engagement with their schools, leading our biggest companies in the UK to invest in the future of our economy, which is children. Or many are establishing their own people-powered innovation, um, like charities like um, a social work program, like Frontline, which is now recruiting about 200 top people to be children's social workers across the country, as well as 30 other social enterprises we're partnering with. And the model of people power change has not only been adopted in education, but it's been adopted not just in the social work example, but also now in police, in mental health, and in other areas of the UK. And all modeled on some of the work we're doing at Teach First. All recognizing that if we want to tackle some of these huge entrenched problems in society, it's not simply about money, it's not simply about a good idea, it's about attracting, investing in, and deploying the best people to where they can make the biggest difference and ensuring that people are the ones who power this change. And for some of you who had a um, speech earlier today, um, it's now spread in, in lots of countries around the world, including Qatar, and the head of Teach for Qatar was speaking earlier. Um, we've seen people in countries as diverse as Qatar, or Peru, or New Zealand, or Nepal, who are working with their own greatest leaders in their own societies to ensure no children in their own societies are written off as coal. But instead, people are empowered to make change and to transform those children's life chances. So if there's anything I hope everyone can take away from today, I want you to remember this. And this is something we've seen in 13 years of Teach First. Too often, people assume that just because something's difficult, it can't be done. But what we've seen time and time again, we've seen it in school after school. We've seen it in London, which has gone from the lowest performing area of the country to now the highest performing area of the country. Change and innovation can happen. It can happen if you invest in people. And at the heart is a very simple solution, which is very much in front of all of us. If you attract, invest in, and get the great people where they can make the biggest difference, if you continue to support them, if you continue to encourage them, then what you quickly realize is you're never dealing with, with coal in the first place. All you've been doing all along is polishing a diamond. And all of us who are working in education know that is absolutely the best part of all of our jobs because we get to work with many, many diamonds every day in our work. So thank you.